Um, good evening, everybody, and thank you for getting together. Um, we're trying to, tonight, we're going to be looking at, this is the governance subcommittee of the Harbor Committee of the uh, Cohasset, Massachusetts. Um, we're going to be looking at um, the creation of a sh um, shellfish um, bylaw. Um, Josh is joining us this evening, and I think everybody else knows each other, uh, but Josh is the newly appointed um, shellfish constable. Do I have that right, uh, Josh? Yeah, I, yeah great. Um, and I know there's other discussions about it having a uh, uh, creating a natural resource officer too. So that's, I think, in, in, the, uh, in the mix. Um, so um, Josh, I'll let everybody introduce themselves. I know you know Tim and you probably know Cassandra, but I'll let everybody else introduce themselves. Um, and I think we've, we had the pleasure of meeting at uh, the Rotary one night. Um, yeah. So thanks for coming. Um, Deb, you wanna say hi? Yeah. Um, Debbie Shad, um, member of this committee, um president of the Cohasa Conservation Trust. Um, I don't know if you want. I think that's probably enough detail for this committee. <laughs> that was right to me, yeah. <laughs> Barb. Uh, Barbara Canny, this committee and harbor committee, I, I think. <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> uh, David? Thank you. Hello, Josh. Uh, it's David Farag, a member of this committee. I was a former member of the Conservation Commission uh, a while ago, but I was there for about 10 to 12 years. So i um, quite aware of all the different issues, but uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, you as well. Uh, so I give a little bit of background of myself uh, too, since you know, I haven't met everybody. Um, so I'm new to the town. Uh, I don't live in town. Um, but uh, new, new to the job, so my job covers uh, the towns of Coasset and Norwell, um, and I'm responsible for uh, marine patrol in both towns, fish and game law enforcement, as well as animal control. Um, so when uh, you know approached with the problems that Coasset has had for years of an inactive shellfish constable, uh, the state taking over basically control of of Coasset's uh, shellfish beds. Uh, you know, given my expertise with it, um, you know, I kind of pushed for it and uh, am looking forward to uh, working in the town for, for a very long time, if not until I get pushed out from mandatory retirement. <laughs> um, but my years of experience come from Wareham uh, back when I was uh, 19 years old, actually, uh, which, believe it or not, was not too, too long ago. Uh, I was down in Wareham as a seasonal assistant harbor master. I was there for two years, um, actually a year and a half. And then on the half of the next year, uh, I got off for a full-time position, sent to the police academy, uh, where essentially my job has been the same um, as it is here now, where I've done marine patrol fishing game, except down in Wareham. Uh, I was also, uh, we had the harbor master department under us. Um, and we were all assistant harbor masters too. So we, I did a little more um, in Wareham with shell fishing, a little more uh, with harbor management uh, and harbor patrol issues, more in regulations and all that stuff. So I've got a pretty good knowledge and working of, of um, everything to do shellfish and, and harbor uh, management related, uh, in addition to animal control and uh, fish and game stuff as well. Um, one other thing that I do is uh, I've actually written textbooks for uh, animal control offices as law reference guides. Uh, and those are used now from, you know, uh, the Eastern Seaboard here all the way out to Western Mass. Uh, I've also written one for harbor masters and shellfish wardens too. And uh, on top of that, I train, uh, I'm one of three trainers who certify animal control offices in the state. Um, so I'm, I get that whole background and uh, very well versed in not just one topic, but a lot. And uh, looking forward to applying that here for Coasset. Well, thank and you, Josh. Me, I'd, I'd yeah. like to just add one thing. Uh, I've gotten to know Josh uh, a little bit over the last several months since he's been in Cohasset, And I can tell you that his philosophy of policing is primarily, uh, or at least initially, education and persuasion. Uh, as opposed to arrests. 
Uh, he's he's very good at that, uh, and you can tell by his personality he's, that's what his uh, his main focus is. However, that being said, should you be littering in the town of Cohasset, you face not only fines but potential incarceration. So uh, I just warn you all. <laughs> As one who walks around the town of Cohasset with a litter bag and picking up the beer cans and the rest of it, uh, Josh is my ally. He's got my back. I know that. <laughs> Josh was very uh, entertaining um, uh, at the Rotary one night, telling us about uh, one of his confrontations with a, with a litterer and the um, and the you know public defender um, constitutional expert that I am. I'm thinking, hmm, that's an interesting analysis of, of the law, but. We'll let we'll go with the story. This is good. <laughs> this is great. So, Josh, thank you. And I know um, I know we're all kind of in a tight schedule this evening because we all want to go and you know um, um, celebrate the retirement of um, uh, Co uh, Bob Sylvia as a chief, uh, the fire chief. And so I was disappointed when I realized it was the same date. Um, but I uh, I think we really want to have a good conversation for the next hour about um, about the shellfish uh, regulation and. Josh, what you think needs to go into it? Just so you have a little background, both David and 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 Debbie and I are all attorneys, so we're we're, we're we understand codes, and and Barb is pretty uh, salty herself, so she understands these things. Um, and, and Tim has been working with you on on the draft, I, I believe. So, do you want to just? I know we, I sent out the three drafts that I had. I think we're going to focus on. Um, I, I called it sample A uh, for the sake of mm -hmm. conversation. And Deb, was that the one? Debbie, was that the one you were able to open? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I think it's important for me because this is a little bit beyond my wheelhouse of, of uh, knowledge on, on um, this sort of regulation. Um, what you think needs to go into this um, is big, big terms. Um, and then we can look at the draft and see how that meets what you think. Barbara? Can I, can I just ask a quick question? Don't we already have, I don't understand. Don't we already have th these, what is Joshua following now? Or are we change, are we editing? I don't believe we have a shellfish regulation present. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We I don't. think we, my understanding and looking at that document that I sent you that was kind of a compendium of what's going on in the Commonwealth. Okay. Um, it was, you know, Cohass and two other towns, I think, are, are, don't have this regulation. Um, probably because it didn't have an active um, use of it. Yeah. I may just give a little more background for Barbara and anybody else who doesn't know it. The uh, the waters of Cohasset are closed to shell fishing for two reasons. Number one, we did not have a shellfish, an active shellfish constable. We had a shellfish constable uh, who basically was inactive. Uh, and then we had a shellfish constable who was not certified until Josh came along as a as manna from heaven for <laughs> those of us that work in the harbor, uh, who is a certified uh, uh, shellfish constable. Number two, the other reason it was closed for shellfishing is because there was no bylaw. Uh, and that's what we're here to discuss today. And uh, until we get a, a bylaw passed and a certified shellfish constable, which we have, the waters will stay closed to shellfishing. Even though there are some recreational shellfishers that continue, uh, uh, they are doing it, uh, I should, should probably use, shouldn't use the term illegally, but they're using it outside you know, protocol for uh, recreational shellfishing. And what Josh will be able to do is uh, do additional testing of the waters, uh, make sure that uh, uh, any shellfish there is healthy, so that it doesn't uh, create a problem for people, humans uh, consuming shellfish that come from our waters. Josh, can I ask a quick question before we get into um, answering the, the question I, I initially asked about what the structure uh, of the bill is? What does it mean to be a certified um, shellfish principal as opposed to non so, what is the Is it a state test or something? Yeah, so now, uh, you know, with police reform, um, we're even running into it at the police department where uh, there's no more kind of special police officers, there's no more part-time police officers uh, due to new regulations for training and such. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll face the burden of that this summer with, uh, with an increased call volume in and of itself. Um, but in addition to that, what they did uh, with this police reform bill 
was it stripped all harbor masters and all shellfish constables and other law enforcement officers who previously had law enforcement training from the Pathfinder Police Academy and essentially has stripped them of their hours if they haven't been performing a police function over the past however many years that they've been in their position. So if they haven't had the powers of arrest, they haven't carried a firearm uh, or exercised either the power of arrest, uh, they're essentially, depending on their last name, have been decertified by the state uh, as of now. Um, there's certain criteria with, with last names. Um, a through H is done now. Um, and then they've got a certain level of, of people, depending on their last name, when they're going to be decertified. Uh, so a lot of towns have run into that problem where a shellfish constable, uh, by statute, has the powers of arrest to, uh, to seize shellfish and also to arrest any person without a warrant who's violating any shellfish regulation rule or bylaw made under chapter 130. So we're gonna run it, you know, we would have run into that um, had I not come along. Uh, I am a certified police officer who meets all the training requirements by the Peace Officer Standard Training Council. Um, so I will be able to continue my enforcement efforts on both land and sea, essentially. Um, but a lot of towns are, are running into that now um, where their harbor masters, shellfish constables are, are kind of, they're basically now just done uh, due to the state legislature. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions on that before we start talking about the... So I just have one quick one again. I'm sorry, but so how are you... So, so Situate's a separate one? Separate shellfish? Uh, yeah, so I, I don't work for the town of Situate. Uh, so I'm, I'm co and just co and Norwell. Uh, the two towns have an intermunicipal agreement between each other for my services. Um, I'm not the shellfish constable in Norwell because they don't have any shellfish to, to watch <laughs> after. Um, but uh, I, I am assigned to Marine Patrol in Norwell. So that's why I, I still do fishing game and Marine Patrol in that town. And there's the intermunicipal agreement between Coasset and Norwell for my shared services. But there's nothing between us and Situate. You and no. Situate. Nope. Not at this point. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, it's, it's all Thank you. I think it's important for you know these questions to be asked, and that's why we're here. Um, uh, anybody else have any other questions about the, the position prior to us getting into? Uh, just to tack on quickly what, what you would ask, Lisa. So, in order to become a, a shellfish constable now, uh, under the law, what what does someone have to do uh, to do, in order to do that? Yeah, so now they would have to attend a full time police academy, uh, go through the entire police academy. And there's also a, uh, an 80 hour course that the uh, Division of Marine Fisheries puts on at Mass Maritime Academy. Uh, completed uh, due to my past jobs. So I'm 100% certified by Marine Fisheries and also through uh, you know, police standards as well. Great, thank you. It's all helpful. Yep. So, Josh, um, and I think my initial question was, um, what do you think needs to go into, I mean, I, it was a great draft. I, I presume you probably fashioned it over, you know, some of these things can be um, pretty pro forma as far as, you know, the, the different pieces of it that have to be in for, for any, any mm -hmm. municipality. Um, what, what do you think is important, especially knowing a little bit more about Cohasset, um, having been here for, you know, a couple of months? Yeah, so um, there are, in, in what I've sent before is proposed aquaculture regulations. And then there's also shellfish regulations. So those are two separate things that we should be looking at to, uh, to implement. Uh, it's not one or the other um, because there is going to come a time where we are going to be faced with someone who will want to open up a, uh, a commercial aquaculture farm in our town. And it's best to just kind of get ahead of it. Uh, if we're going to go for you know, recreational shellfish regulations, at the same time, we should be implementing the proposed uh, aquaculture regulations. That way we get it all done in one nutshell. And we're not, you know, someone, because the problem is, is once we open our waters, um, Division of Marine Fisheries says that we're now, you know, they, we, can, we can accept commercial 
um, aquaculture plans. And if we don't have that, those steps or what we want to do as a town in progress already and in place, uh, Division of Marine Fisheries is going to tell us what we have to do. So it's best get ahead of the get ahead of the game, um, get our stuff all regulated before our waters open, get them all approved by Marine Fisheries, get the bylaw approved by the Attorney General, um, and then we're in kind of A plus C instead of D minus. So it could it be one joint um, uh, regulation? Could it just have two sections? I did, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yep. um, I, yeah, I separated yeah. them just for the point of clarification and clarity, uh, reading through it all because you could scroll through one piece of it and be like, oh, okay, what's going on next? Um, so that's why I did separate the two, just kept them separate. But absolutely, you know, it could be uh, they could go on to whatever chapter and section of the bylaw the harbor is uh, is under, uh, and create another section for shellfish and aquaculture regulations create subsections just out of that as well. And Josh, what would your elevator speech be to explain to someone what the difference between aquaculture and shellfish is? I mean, one is, you know, develops the other, but I mean, how, how, how would you explain that if we were trying to get this um, through town meeting? Yeah, so, uh, you know, shellfish regulations, we can kind of say it all as one. Um, aquaculture would be somebody who the town would permit to lease out a portion of the town's jurisdictional waters for the purpose of uh, having a private facility on those areas to farm and, and cultivate and ha well, harvest uh, shellfish that they have grown for profit. Um, that's the difference between aquaculture. Whereas in, if we create just shellfish regulations for recreational harvesting, uh, that's strictly just for someone to go out to uh, grab a clam dinner for the night. Josh, does the agriculture also include uh, uh, things like uh, kelp farming? Yep, yep. Okay. So that's a new, uh, a big thing we've, uh, the, down the Cape, they're actually seeing a lot of it um, where they, they are farming kelp. Uh, and also now people are, are, uh, are farming seed, uh, seed, which is baby clams, baby oysters, baby cohogs. Uh, and then they're all then they're selling it to people who own facilities like Island Creek and Doxbury, um, or um, you know, there, there's so many of them now that I wouldn't even be able to to tell you the whole bunch of them because they get lost in my brain. But they yeah. essentially sell to those people who own aquaculture or shellfish grants, uh, is what they're called, uh, and then they grow out the seed from there. And they would not include lobstery. It would not. No. Okay. Nope. Lobstering is uh, totally separate. Yep. Uh, lobstering is all under uh, is is strictly defined under Chapter One Hundred and Thirty uh, in its own subsections, and it's yeah totally separate from uh, from aquaculture. Essentially, aquaculture will cover kelp, uh, the, the growing of kelp, oysters, cohogs, soft shell clams, um, and some crabs. Yeah. And just to, uh, for this uh, working group to understand, the, uh, the Harbor Committee uh, in the Harbor Plan was uh, looking forward to the day when uh, lobsters migrated to the north uh, and we needed to encourage additional commercial uh, fishing of one kind or another. Uh, so all of what work we're doing on Government Island is looking toward the day when uh, we need to do something besides uh, just uh, lobster, commercial lobster fishing. So what Josh is talking about would allow us to do that. And yeah, and, uh, and also with my enforcement abilities, uh, I am authorized under Mass General Law to enforce lobster regulations. So even though they're not covered under our bylaw, uh, I am still allowed to, uh, to enforce commercial and recreational lobstering. Yeah, I mean, this just to uh, reinforce what Tim just said, um, it, it is, you know, it's been a concern, especially if CSAR and Jack Buckley has pointed out um, that you know, they're very concerned about the, the, the lobster beds and, you know, going forward and what, it, what how this is going to impact the industry. You know, so the hope is to, to have some sort of um, re re economic replacement in some fashion uh, for, for, the, for the workforce. Um, I'm not sure, Debbie, do you have any questions about what's been said so far or? No. 
Yeah. I, I had a quick one um, because we're talking uh, big picture kind of stuff about the reg about the regulations of both um, regarding the aquaculture. Uh, is is there any? I know um, Tim had talked about the two hindrances that that keep us from doing it, having the shellfish constable and then the underlying uh, bylaws and regulations. But is there any other hindrances? Because I didn't know if the harbor uh, on the map that there was from one of the other handouts we have, if if it if it if that part of Cohasset qualified uh, to be able to do that aquaculture. So is there any hindrances such as like we have the outfall sewer pipe where it has to be so far away from that um, or or any anything else that would would hinder Cohasset sort of jump starting this new area? Yeah, so that would all be determined based on uh, the opening of the shellfish uh, beds and uh, what we need to do first in order to even find out if they can be open is have that strict bylaw in place. That way we know the marine fisheries knows that, you know, I'm going to end up patrolling it regularly, yeah. uh, that we have a bylaw in place. So we won't know for sure what areas truly will open yeah. um, until we have the bylaw in place. I start bringing out marine fisheries to start testing the waters because right mm -hmm. now they're just testing. Um, and they, uh, they, they just don't, they don't have the capability sometimes to yeah. get out uh, onto the water and, and test certain portions where they should be testing. Yeah. Uh, and that will, you know, once we get a good six to nine months, even longer uh, in some areas of water quality data, that will show when we, we can uh, end up opening those areas to potential, whether that's recreational, shell fishing, uh, the commercial harvesting of shellfish or aquaculture. Okay. The DMF does test now. Um, uh, they test inside of uh, Cunningham's Bridge in uh, 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 Little Harbor, and there is a, a very healthy mussel bed in there. Um, mm -hmm. So they are testing, and I think in my conversation with DMF is that water is, is good. It's clean. It would qualify to be an open uh, area. But as Josh says, we need these other things to be done first. Yeah, that's what I was asking. Is it more testing dependent or are there any uh, any that you might know of? There might be arcane rules that we don't know about, but is there any hard rules, for instance, that you can't have aquaculture within so many feet of an outfall pipe or something like that that you know of? Um, yeah. And if you don't know of it, that's OK, but I just didn't know yeah, if there was. Yeah, there is. But there's also, you know, the Division of Marine Fisheries um, under the National Shellfish Sanitation Program, there is actually those. Uh, those regulations of, you know, you can't have it in certain areas, okay. um, but you can if the water tests okay. okay. So it really is dependent pretty much on that, on that, uh, on the testing of the water. There's one thing that the Division of Marine Fisheries does now, uh, which is allowed under uh, the model ordinance from the NSSP, which is kind of how we, what towns and, and states have to follow regarding shellfish sanitation. Uh, is called the rainfall management area or conditionally approved as the official uh, word for it, which I believe Little Harbor will fall into. Uh, and a conditionally approved area or rainfall management area is where we have a certain amount of um, storm drains or runoff from septic systems or runoff from properties, uh, raw water runoff from properties uh, that drain into our coastal areas and would affect water quality. Uh, we had a we had four of those in Wareham, uh, where if we got a, a certain amount of rainfall, usually over, and uh, that. Are you freezing a little bit? Time. Some two of them were seven days, and, and the other few were five days, just to allow the water to end up filtering out and uh, and, and to kind of yeah filter and uh, and also oops, sorry dispatch. <laughs> and uh and to allow the shellfish to go through a few tide cycles uh to filter out in case there was any bacteria that did accumulate uh during that rain period of time so if i'm but yeah mo go ahead Chuck. oh sorry go ahead no um, if i'm understanding you correctly you know there's, there's a process here we have to start by getting a, a regulation and then the, then the the uh the state authorities and the federal authorities come in and do testing. They then authenticate the area to be appropriate um, for the aquaculture. Um, and, and then you apply all the regulations about outfall pipes or any other regulations, and then it gets approved. Mm -hmm. That's sort of yep. the disease. Yeah. 
Yep, the first, the, definitely the first step uh, that was needed was to get a certified and active shellfish constable, which here I am. Uh, next step is uh, is to get uh, two bylaws into, or one bylaw into place that will establish aquaculture regulations and also commercial and recreational shellfish regulations. Oh, another, and then we can take okay. it from there. Another quick question is, is when you had this uh, with both the bylaws and sort of the regulations, is, uh, is is that sort of the normal way to do it where you, you just sort of belt and suspenders them both and get them passed by town meeting uh, or and then the and then the appropriate body after that can add to those regulations or change them, or do they always have to come back to town meeting to be? Uh, the, so essentially what will happen uh, right now, the, the state of Commonwealth of Massachusetts has the regulatory authority over our shellfish beds. Uh -huh. uh, that's part of because of we didn't have the active shellfish constable. Now that I'm here, once we pass the bylaw um, for both you know commercial, recreational and aquaculture, the uh, the state will relinquish control back to the, the town of Coasset, uh, but they relinquish it to the board of selectmen uh, okay. or the select board. Uh, they won't relinquish it to any other town authority other than the select board. So then, if we have an issue that goes on, such as red tide, I would be notified of it first. I'd have to go to an emergency meeting with the select board. They would then determine the beds to be closed. I go out post them and then it, it's closed till they open. Whereas then if the state was to maintain control, the state wouldn't notify anyone at all of the town. The state would go out both signs and the state kind of keeps the town out of it because they don't have any control. So Josh, is the, is the way the, the most bylaws happen, is, is there a state standard that you can exceed, but you cannot go less than? I mean, that's how most yes. say, say right Yeah, so just, just, like, uh, just like other, um, other you know, laws, you know, mm -hmm. the local law can be more restrictive than what uh, what state law is. Mm -hmm. The good thing about the state law is that there's really only like three sections in chapter 130. Uh, you know, nothing really defines size, nothing defines areas where you can harvest shellfish other than DMF posting those approved areas. Um, there's really, it's very, very bare bones and it allows the town to create a more robust bylaw, which uh, if you look at those two regulations that I've got, um, they are pretty, pretty extensive and, and pretty, pretty well-defined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, what do you, what have you seen in your experience that was lacking in a bylaw that you want to make sure that we have in ours? Yeah. So there's uh, you know, we, when I was in Wareham, I had helped uh, our director. Uh, we were when I was there, we were part of, uh, we were all police officers, but we were a separate department. Um, and in, in that department, the department had held the position of con shellfish constable harbor master. Uh, and I had helped uh, to end up rewriting our, uh, our shellfish bylaw to make it a little more robust. Uh, there were some things that were lacking in it from size limits and uh, bag limits for the day. Um, there were other kind of loopholes in it and the old regulations that we had that we did take out. Um, the number one thing that I do see in some towns, uh, and not every one town is, is exact, so it's kind of hard to, to go for it because, you know, we don't have nearly as many shellfish beds in Coasset as Wareham or Falmouth or Bourne. Uh, we also have, you know, different species. Uh, Wareham has some mussels, Bourne has some mussels. Uh, but we have a, a huge abundance of mussels in our area. Uh, so it's kind of hard to, to go off of what other towns are lacking because each town is so unique. Uh, but I do see in, in some regulations that vary from town to town is uh, size limits and days that you can go recreational shell fishing. Size limits is definitely big because some towns, uh, the stall up regulations could be that you only need a defined annulus ring, which is the pumps on the shellfish on the uh, scallop shell. Uh, in some other towns, they state that the width of the shell has to be two inches. So there's very, it varies uh, from town to town and, and the species and the population of shellfish that each town has. So this is a pretty large document and, you know, this is kind of the first um, analysis or, or background that we've received. 
Um, and I, I know we want to keep this moving re relatively quickly, but I'm, I'm wondering how um, the other members of the committee want to go forward as far as you know, reviewing it and, 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 and giving any sort of endorsement. I mean, is this um, modeled after something, uh, either a suggested state model or modeled after some other towns? I, I'm only talking about sample A because that's the only thing I could read. But, sure. um, is this? Yeah. So, so there's there's there are model aquaculture um, bylaws from the state, but again, they're just not as robust as what they should be. Uh, so essentially, this is a combination of what I have previously done in my past employment. Uh, I've looked over two other towns, both Falmouth, Bar actually three, Falmouth, Barnstable, and Fairhaven, kind of adjusted what I liked uh, and what I didn't and what I thought would be fitting for us in Coasset. And uh, that's basically what you see now. So you looked at other best practices and tried to... Yeah. yeah. And, yep. and what didn't you like? I'm trying to figure out if, if you know, what, what can be helpful to us um, to look at to see if, you know, I mean, one, one, one of the processes was that uh, the applications, you know, go to the Harbor Committee. I mean, is that, is that how it's done mm -hmm. in other, other jurisdictions? Perfect. Yeah, so it, it also, you know, we have a very, we have an active Harbor Committee here, uh, who, you know, as we all know, makes recommendations to the select board for the betterment of the Harbor. Uh, other towns, when I look at their uh, regulations for shell fishing and aquaculture, they didn't really have that. Um, and it just went right to the select board, which I didn't really like, um, because I, I personally think that the Harbor Committee, who deals with harbor issues consistently, should have a say in what's going, you know, if, if we come down to an, an aquaculture farm, they should have a say in, uh, in what's potentially going to be put into the harbor. Uh, and the select board would then look after the recommendations from them. So that was one thing that wasn't in a lot of other towns because they either just lack a harbor committee or they wanted to leave them out. Um, and I personally did not think that that would, was very fitting for us uh, in Coasset. Well, maybe another way to ask the same question Lisa just asked is, are, um, could you tell us maybe which parts of this are a little bit unique to Cohasset based on your yeah. assessment of what we need that maybe other towns don't need or different conditions here than in other towns? Yeah, so essentially everything that I have here now in both, um, in both well, I'll look at the proposed aquaculture, uh, which was sample A first. Uh, sample A, I have completely gutted through it entirely, uh, read over it about 150 times, if not more. Um, to make sure that it did conform to what we need in Cohasset. So our proposed, those sample A is 100% Cohasset based, based on things that I've done previously and looking at those other towns, I've kind of cracked the shell as you would um, and, uh, and, and made it ours. Uh, in regards to the other uh, sample B, the proposed shellfish regulation, uh, those are certain, there are certain things in there that uh, I really don't know if we have, such as soft shell clams. Uh, you know, I, I don't know the status of our beds for shell, soft shell clams. I'm sure there's some out there. Uh, there's certainly the habitat for it, uh, but none of, I won't know. Division of Marine Fisheries comes in and does a, a shellfish survey with me. I definitely know this cohogs for sure, because I see the, uh, the, the seagulls, so the beach chickens, uh, they pick them up and slam them off the ground. So I, I definitely know that we have cohogs. Uh, and I definitely know we have mussels because I've already caught a mussel offender and they've been, they were told uh, that they can't harvest mussels. Um, so I know of certain things, but um, you know, I've added in regulations for soft shell clams. I've added in regulations for oysters. That way, in the event that we do have those species out there, uh, we'll have a, a regulation in place for it sh should somebody start to harvest those. 
I think that um, as far as a process, because I think, uh, you know, we need to have another set of, set of eyes on this of people who are actually in, you know, who, who, who potentially, you know, maybe some of the fishermen or somebody just to look at this, yeah. um, just to see if there's anything that pops out that, you know, we don't think of that, that might, um, you know, they might, they may find curious, or they may find, you know, um, uh, something that they would like to do in a different way. Um, I don't want to slow down this process. I know this is a priority. I, um, we, but I, but I feel a little bit on, um, not, not equipped, you know, to, to think of all the, the questions to give a solid recommendation. Um, I don't know, Dave or Barbara, Deb, what do you think about that? That's, I think definitely we need to have somebody, but one of the things I noticed, I actually read some of this, I think, <laughs> is that I don't know how it would apply. And I, all I made a note was that it was under eligibility section two, there was no page number, but it says like, our guys, if they want to fish, they have to have three to four years of previous experience in our harbor. So that's, I can't imagine that applying to our guys since we don't have any shell fishermen. Or do we? Yeah, so, so uh, like you're looking at the sample A, correct? Um, I Actually, I think I'm still on the regulations. Okay. So um, yeah, so that's actually in the commercial shellfish licensing. Yeah. Uh, and, and the reason why that's in there um, is because we would want someone who is, so the commercial shellfish harvesting is separate from aquaculture. Um, aquaculture is where the town would, would license a piece of property or a section of water for someone to grow shellfish and then sell it for harvest. Uh, we'll sell it, to, sell it to market, I should say. Whereas yeah, yeah. the commercial shellfish regulation is someone who does not have a grant uh, and they would be coming in to harvest soft shell clams at low tide or harvest sea clams at any given time or harvest any other shellfish uh, from our waters um, at any time, at low tide, high tide or at any time. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why I put in there that they should be uh, familiar with our harbor or a town resident is because we don't want someone from Tooke Ferry, uh, who's inland, has no, you know, uh, could have potentially no idea about our town at all, and then is profiting off of our shellfish resource. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it is varied from many towns uh, where they do only allow commercial shellfish uh, licenses to be issued to town residents. So, yeah, so like Lisa said, it might be good to have. The, the only thing I, I had with that is that I, I'll have to look at the language um, yeah. more, more in depth on that. But um, a lot of, we do have a lot of lobstermen that, that lobster in the harbor, but don't necessarily live in town. Right. Um, so, but it, I guess it, that would, that's where the familiarity with the harbor or some of the other things might kick in as opposed to the strict residency. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and like I said, the, the lobstering is not affected by these bylaws at yep. all. Um, so they, they definitely wouldn't be affected by it, but should, you know, we could definitely change the language, you know, if someone has been, uh, lobstering or someone has been a commercial fisherman who has a mooring in the town of Coasset, uh, or a, or a floating business, uh, out of the Harbor, uh, that they could then apply for one of these licenses to kind of expand their repertoire and their offerings to the, uh, to the, to the market. So we could definitely change that. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, it's it's curious to me, Josh, that I, I'm wondering um, that a town can regulate uh, the the use of the water when it's Commonwealth water. You know, out, out after a certain. Uh, I mean, usually you can regulate the parking spaces, you can regulate the beaches, you can regulate. Um, but it's and I know that's litigation that's going on now with the you know. Mm -hmm. um, um, but uh, I'm 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 just wondering is is it attached to um, an ability to set up some sort of installation on land um, because the um, you know after you go out a certain amount um, you know it, it is Commonwealth land not in Commonwealth ownership as opposed to the town ownership. Yeah, so the town of Coasset has jurisdiction three miles out from our shoreline, um, which is pretty pretty significant. Yeah. Um, and right now, like I'll take Situate for example, they have, um, and a good example of this is uh, the boat that capsized over the winter time and sent the guys into the uh, into the water. 
they were out there scallop dragging. Uh, you know, we could have someone who potentially could be a scallop dragger who would come down and they can harvest in our waters if it's open. Um, so we do own out to those, that three mile mark. Um, and it that doesn't necessarily have to have an installation on land where, because we do have uh, three public areas where someone could um, dock a boat and land their shellfish. Uh, they could do it on board. Well, actually four, uh, Parker Ave, Government Island, uh, the small little dock on Border Street, and then also the one on Margin Street. So we definitely have areas where, you know, someone wouldn't have to uh, have this, uh, any land installation at all. Yeah. Makes sense. Typic so uh, typically with like an aquaculture facility, if someone was going to grow oysters, uh, what they would do is we, you know, they would apply for the permit. Um, it would go through its process once we get our bylaw in place and our actual process for that. Um, they would get granted their license and, and all that. The behind the scenes stuff would work. Uh, but they don't necessarily need to have something on land because what they'll do is they'll have floating cages out if that's what they choose to have or what, that's what they're permitted for. Um, but they'd also have a small floating dock out there where they would end up putting their shellfish on, uh, sizing it, sorting it, and then bagging it, tagging it for, uh, for transport into land and then shipping it off the market. So everything can pretty much be done out on the water uh, when it comes to aquaculture stuff. So there's definitely no need for a, for a land-based operation at all because we have those public access areas. Wow. Lot to this. Um, yeah, there yeah, is. Yeah, there definitely because, is. Because it, that, can you imagine those little ones being accessible to bring things up into a truck? I mean, I, is there a way we can limit the ones they're allowed to use? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and and that can all be uh, that can be. I can't imagine the traffic licenses. problem here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then you know when when someone comes in. We, we can limit the amount of aquaculture licenses that we issue. There can yeah. be a moratorium on them. So we could only have, you know, two or three. Uh, same thing with commercial shellfish licensing. Uh, we can limit the amount of those to, you know, five or 10, whichever, whichever you know, comes down the pipeline. Uh, and then we certainly can limit where they land it. Uh, mm -hmm. Because I believe I did put in both uh, aquaculture and shellfish regulations yeah. for commercial that I have to inspect it every time they land. Um, and it has to be landed in the town of Coasset. So we can definitely limit where they go. You know, Government Island is getting that facelift um, and we're best not to, you know, put a, put, put a whole facility, you know, landing facility there. You know, they've got their, they're gonna have the uh, uh, dollies and the new dock system and all that. So it will, it'll definitely be good for them. And we could 100% limit them to that. So this is way beyond that. What happens to the situate oyster guys if they want to land on our docks? Can they do that? Well, we could. Uh, we can definitely make a bylaw uh, that shellfish, and we can put it into these regulations that shellfish uh, that is harvested in other towns cannot be landed in our town, um, strictly because who's going to inspect it? Um, I'm certainly not inspecting another town's shellfish, even though I have the authority to right. do so. Uh, I can inspect any shellfish that's landed uh, at any time in our town. I just don't think that it would be very, uh, you know, conducive to our town's well-being and having another town's basically mm -hmm. benefit off of our areas uh, being used. Look at a new, brand new boat ramp at Parker Ave, um, and that has gotten a useful life over I, I don't even know how many years now. Yeah. Um, I remember coming in there when I was a kid uh, at, at 13 years old, coming out of the North River on one of the Mary's boats, and I'd be like, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I'm, gonna go, I'm going up to Coasset, I'm going to be a scofflaw, and I'd go <laughs> in and I'd see everyone using the boat ramp. Uh, so, you know, it, it, it's completely, completely, you know, beyond its useful life now, uh, and it's going <laughs> to get fixed. Yes. Um, but having that added traffic from another town's, yeah. you know, facility just it doesn't make 
fiscal sense to me, number one, and then it just doesn't make you know operational sense to me because then we're limiting our residents and those who pay taxes in our town uh, access to a boat ramp that they should have at any given time for someone from another town to come in and land their shellfish. So yeah. I, I think we absolutely need to put in the uh, put in the regulations that no other town shellfish can be landed in our town. Is it in the is it in the regulation now? I think I added it in there. Uh, you know, right right now, as of you know present time, I don't think we have. I think the only shellfish bylaw we have is that it says the town manager can appoint a shellfish constable, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so, yeah, it wraps it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it lacks everything. Um, yeah, and that's why I I went through this. I went through it with Tim. Uh, I think I told Tim that I, I spent. Uh, pretty much you know two or three weeks going through this um vetting it myself i sent it to tim he sent me some uh some things that i i missed out on uh, and other things that could have been added for the benefit of coasset added those in um and now you know i i deliver here to you so <laughs> We appreciate it. We really do. And this Thank is you. this has been um, very, very informative and helpful. Um, I'm still feel like that we may need just one um, very quickly scheduled additional meeting where we can um, go back, um, think about what you've just told us, reach out to others and you know perhaps think about who else we could ask to, to look at it. I don't know if, um, and I don't wanna put the copy for the horse, but I don't know if this is something we vet through town council uh, for any issues that you know we may not look at. Um, I know the process in Cohasset as far as amending the bylaw is because we're a standing committee, you know, we can propose something to selectmen, the selectmen can go to the town meeting, but then um, you did mention that you, you, you believe that it had to be approved by the attorney general. Um, I would yeah. be after the town meeting process, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I yeah. Mean, so the shellfish regulations, uh, you know, after the town meeting, uh, they go to the division of marine fisheries for approval. Uh, and then like any bylaw goes to the attorney general. Right. Right. So the only thing I, I would uh, urge you to do, if you do want to do additional research or study or get anybody else involved, the, um, uh, August is the cutoff for uh, the warrant articles that are going to the uh, fall town meeting. So uh, we are now approaching <laughs> summer, the summer uh, hiatus where people disappear. So please get this done. Uh, the Harbor Committee is ready to uh, review it and approve it. Uh, so I'd like very much to encourage you to get this get this done and get I'm, it. I'm talking about Tim having a meeting in, in maybe in um, I don't know ten days or something. Um, and well, that's, uh, that's fine. Ten days is now the end of June. Uh, we're getting into the Fourth of July. I'm just cautioning. I've been hearing this from yeah. uh, town uh, town hall that we're you know we're, people are getting uh, they've got COVID, they've got summer vacations, they've got all kinds of reasons. Uh, not to get things done. So uh, just encourage you, we do have a Harbor Committee next week. Another 15, we'll yeah. this. Uh, so if possible, if you could get this, do all the research you need to do in, in addition to what you've already done, you've had this now for a while, uh, I would much appreciate it. I just ask you to do that if you could. Thank you. Yeah. I, so I, I, Lisa, are we, are we reading, are we calling through it word for word? And well, making to, you know, I mean, recommendations. If people feel in any way comfortable voting it right now, I mean that that's up to the collective wisdom of this group. Yep. Um, I just didn't feel comfortable imposing that on this group where we just have gotten the document um, circulated and 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 we've had a very informative um, information that I I wasn't aware of some of these right. things and I've reached out to Josh a couple of times and now we were able to get him to a meeting which is great um and and so I don't know what, what is it uh, what are other people so talking? how does the land like land the dock the landing site and stuff does that have to be written into this do we write it do you know what I'm saying that no. yes so I, I don't I would it. have to look through I I off the top of my head I had a rough a rough past month I got into a motorcycle accident and then my, uh, oh, my grandmother right. passed away. So oh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, thank you. I've, uh, I, I can't remember off the top of my head if I did put it in there. I'm kind of 50-50. So I'd have to relook through it. 
we can, um, do, and we can I know do that. that I, I know I put in there that all shellfish harvested in Coasset had to be landed in Coasset. Okay. Um, I just, I, I'm not certain if I put in from other towns or not. So that would be something that we would have to add in additionally. Yeah, that's not hard. I mean, you know, that's, no. that's, that's okay. Okay. It's, it's, yeah. okay. But I mean, I just think it, it, it makes sense for people to, now that we've listened and heard from Josh and it's been very helpful, uh, just to take another review, we get together in seven to 10 days. Um, you notice I shaved th three days, a couple of days off here. <laughs> and to come back and, and, and to see, you know, if we're still comfortable voting on this. That, that sounds fine uh, from, from hearing from Josh as a, you know, from everything that went into it, just give it a quick glance, maybe make a, you know, few minor edits or whatever that, that we had talked about and then get it back. And I, I hear what Tim is saying, uh, definitely we don't want to be dipping into July. Uh, right. We want to get that, get that passed off. But my, my vacations uh, with my work are going to be in August anyway, but um, exactly. it's, it's I, I think, yeah, we want to get it and get it teed up and queued up so it can get right. on the, on the uh, warrant for the uh, special town meeting. And I think, I think from seeing this from the different um, scope that we had with this, with this subcommittee working group, this is, you know, this is and, and hearing Josh and everything that's going to go into this and, and the different steps. This is quite exciting that this could be a whole new area uh, or right. expansive area, uh, reintroducing some of the things that Cohasset used to do at the harbor and and in other places in Cohasset. And um, I know I think it's exciting and it's the first of many steps to be taken on to that. Do you feel comfortable with that too? Yeah, I mean, I, I had <laughs> my uh, I had a few wordsmithing kind of questions about the draft, which I could send maybe by email to somebody or to the whole committee. Yeah, why, don't you, why don't you send it to this group, and you know, so we can keep the the. the I mean, we're not supposed to deliberate by email, but but if but if it's just a suggestion, then at the next meeting, the questions we'll about some numbering and you know, a couple okay. of just little little things, and then you know, if we're voting on anything beyond sample A. I, I don't feel comfortable voting on anything that I haven't read. And yeah, because you couldn't get it open. So let me send it again to you and see if I'll, I'll just cut and paste it into an email. I know you've had a hard time opening the various documents. Okay. Okay. So Josh, would you be able to come back in, in you know, maybe a week to, to, to put this baby to bed? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. So why don't we look at the calendar and... Um... Well, if I could suggest, we do have a, a Harbor Committee meeting scheduled for uh, for next week we could uh, combine the the two uh, and you could uh, you could bring your your thoughts to that harbor committee we have at six o'clock on the 15th um, which is a week from weeks from tonight if possible um, and the only thing on the agenda uh, I think there are a couple of things but minor things on the agenda uh, other than this so uh, if you could do that, that would be terrific. If for some reason that is uh, structurally impossible, uh, we'll deal with it. But uh, well, I, I would rather um, have our subcommittee at, at 530 and then we could all stay for the six o'clock Harbor Committee meeting just to finish this because this is the, uh, the, the governance subcommittee's recommendation to the Harbor Committee. So if people could make it at 530, um, Cassandra, I don't know if we could roll, if we could have a 530 I, before the six. Yeah, I, I think one of the things is if, if you're going to do that, you would post this one and then on the Harbor committees, just add it to the agenda. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, so that's how you would have them as sure. two separate things that roll together. Yeah. I'm sure Cassandra could make that work. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so as David said, um, the agenda for the Harbor committee would change a little bit um, and there would be two separate zoom links. So I would just have one zoom set up for the yeah. 530 and then everybody could just sign out and re-log into the yeah, six o'clock. That's session. fine. That makes sense. Great. Sure. Um, I, I can't make, make a meeting next um, on the 15th. I have a conflict. So um, I mean, assuming you have a majority without me then. But I really would like to your input uh, Deb, so if, if you if you wanted to send me some of the, um, I'll, I'll definitely send um, the questions slash edits that I had okay. to the committee and um, yeah. Great. Great. Well, I, uh, on behalf of the Harbor Committee, I really appreciate that. Um, uh, this is a long time in coming. Josh has done yeoman's work. Uh, Josh brings so much to this town. I can tell you that uh, Josh, we're we're fortunate to have you as uh, part of our team. So. Uh, uh, this is a this is something that will start 
uh, a, a long and very uh, uh, robust future for our harbor, I think. Uh, long after, certainly long after I'm here, but maybe some of you will still be around when, the, <laughs> when we start commercial agriculture in Cohasset. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tim. And yeah, I mean, you know, I, I see the, the harbor's future absolutely uh, with those new buildings that are being planned down there. I, I truthfully think that, uh, you know, we are going to become a destination harbor yeah. uh, for sure. So we are. Great. Okay. All right. Well, um, off. Thank we have you. A, we'll have a five thirty meeting before the six o'clock meeting, and we'll try to uh, work on that. I don't know if, if anybody wanted to. The, uh, the other agenda items that we had for this meeting was to, you know, talk about. Um, uh, Tim has asked the, the people who are appointed to the Harbor Committee to talk about priorities um, out of the fifty two indices. That were already on the agenda. We, we, I was laughing because I went through all my notes and we had done that, gosh, about two, a year and a half ago um, with, uh, with Lauren, which, and we had already sent them in and this and that. So I'm, I said, I'm just going to cut and paste this through. Ah. <laughs> it's, it's, we already did this once. So, um, but um, I don't know if, if any of you had any uh, thoughts about after sitting through the last meeting, if the, or, uh, the, uh, things that you think would be um, good for us to ch chat about priority wise. The next half hour meeting. I, Barbara, oh, if you remember. Now, I got, I'm sorry, I just unmuted myself. Yeah, if, if you remember at the, the end of the Harbor Committee, Tim had asked the Harbor Committee members to put together priorities based oh, on. Oh, yeah. The, I remember that from a year and a half ago, but exactly last and, meeting I was on the West Coast and got I oh, was going right. forward instead of backwards, so I missed it. Right. So, <laughs> the, yeah, she called me. She texted me like one thirty in the morning. It's one o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and I was still going. I'm like, it's a little late, Barb. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, sorry. Uh, that's okay. Um, so I was wondering, Cassandra, if I could ask you to ask Lauren to like dust off, you know, that all the all the input we gave like a year and a half ago, and that's when she put together that you know excellent PowerPoint to to separate the governance and, and chip and this yeah. and that. So I feel like we're reinventing the wheel. We are def that definitely yeah. is. Um, but I think that would be helpful if, if we could have that document. I'm sure we could send anything along. Okay, great. All right. So thank you, everybody. I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't like to push people into decision making. Um, I know we're very nervous about a time frame, but um, I don't think we'll make it. I don't you know, none of us want to put our name on something respectfully, um, Josh, um, unless we really understand what it, what it says. <laughs> um, it's, it's a uh, it's a professional hazard being lawyers. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm right there with you. Um, and, and I know it's a whole yeah. new realm. Uh, for some people, uh, but you know, you definitely have your trust in me that uh, it is thorough and all that. But I 100% understand the vetting, uh, and I appreciate it because mm -hmm. there's some stuff in there that you know could have I have could have taken from another town or something that I had proposed previously and had for another town that could end up not applying to Coasset. And uh, and uh, definitely, it's always good to have have a review for anything. I mean. I, I think when I write a police report, I have six people review it before I submit it to the chief. So, sure. I, uh, you know, I, I totally appreciate it 100 percent. That's because those lousy defense attorneys that I employ. You know. <laughs> one of the documents Did that I... came in that package was yeah. the uh, big one with the overall explanation of shell fishing. And it was I think it was like 189 pages. Of course, there was, you know, some uh, um, exhibits and things with it. But uh, that, but as you're looking at the the. The regulations and the bylaw if you can kind of skim that and and which it talks about the whole industry and how it's kind mm -hmm. of regulated between state and local and everything that 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 really helps with the underpinning of, of what the bylaw is and and sort of where it's going and what it's what it's used for so i realize that some people didn't you know only got one piece of it just the regulations so but that that's that document was certainly helpful in oh, reading good, it good because you know. when i found it i thought this is huge but this yeah, is yeah. huge I thought, you know, maybe at least it'd give you a flavor of the industry. You know, yeah. gosh, I think it was a, a, attached to it. But I had to laugh because of all the municipalities that didn't take part in this statewide program to, to assess the shellfish regulation, what was Gilhassett? 
yeah. <laughs> so there was no touchstones of, of, of uh, you know, local local interest. But um, thank you, everybody. We'll see you on the 15th. I just want, I have one quick question. Are we, this the first one, the license regulations, do you want us to go over that one too? Or just A and B? A and B, Josh, A and B are, are the ones that are the two um, templates, right? That you yes. are comfortable yep. using. Okay. Yeah. So we we would want to we would want to review both A and B for implementation into one bylaw. Right. Right. Got it. Yep. And uh, one well, other thing that I did want to I want to point out is uh, when you read through there and it refers to natural resource officer. Uh, that essentially means me, the shellfish constable, as we're we're going to be rolling in the two positions into one. Uh, so natural resource officer encompasses all of those those things. So it won't say shellfish constable uh, strictly. It uh, mm -hmm. the most the majority of it says natural resource officer. Yeah, I, I noticed that, and I talked to Tracy um, and um, in. Um, senior's office today and said, you know, do we have a job description just to see how that worked? Um, but she's going to get that far, so we'll, yep. we'll have it. Great. Good, good. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, Appreciate it. Sorry, thank you. before everybody signs off, um, I just wanted to note um, our communication specialist has noted that some of the uh, committees have not been officially adjourning the um, oh, okay. meeting, so just wanted to make sure that we did that as yes. we leave. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that's right. You know, so funny because I was wondering, you know, the whole work group as opposed to committee versus, you know, and I know we um, comply with the open meeting law because that's just the best practice. You know, even though working groups are not supposed to have to, it's still it's best practice um, um, and notification this and that. So um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So I'm I, <laughs> I, a motion that we adjourn. It's seconded. I think we've adjourned. Well, you have to say all in favor. All in, all favor. in favor. Aye. All in favor. Aye. Aye. We don't have to do Good. Ah. Motion passes. <laughs> See you in about a half an hour at Bobby's thing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Josh. We really appreciate your time. Welcome, no Josh. Have a good night. Thank you.